I move to adopt the resolution. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion on this? Okay, all those in favor? Oh, did you have, I'm sorry, Bruce. Is this where I make the motion? Where you make it. Oh, make yes. The motion on that. yes. Okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, I have, I move to amend this. I move to amend the resolution. We're having technical difficulties here. Okay. Can okay. I do it? Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, I am going to propose that we put in the table of organization a full time communications specialist for the city of Sheboygan and um, a little bit of a rationale. Uh, the media coverage for the city in the last decade has changed. We don't have local reporting now. We've got regional reporting. And it makes government transparency and communications more difficult. Uh, the city has no communications plan. And I'd just like to share this. This is a spreadsheet with an estimated 40 website addresses and 57 social media sites to contact our city. Um, it has 22 administrators. Uh, and for lack of coordination, the city, I don't think, is getting a maximum impact from collaborating with WSCS, with Mead Library, with Visit Sheboygan, and several other community organizations. Um, the ground has been laid for this particular um, particular job in 2019, an eight member communications task force of four city employees and four local businesses, business communications professionals, uh, met for eight months to study the city's communications efforts. The year end report cited the absence of the following, a unified communication strategy, a full-time communication staff person or department, and an interdepartmental communications team. Um, a dedicated communications position isn't a new concept. The city of Racine has one, at least one, and West Bend has one, full-time communication specialist. So my proposal is to establish a full-time communications position in the mayor's office starting in, in 2022. Uh, we will develop a job description and a budget, hire the employee estimated between 70 and $85,000 a year that has the appropriate educational credentials and a demonstrated track record in the profession. So that is my motion to establish a full-time communications position. We're here second. I'm just going to make a point of okay. order. So what you're voting on here is the budget appropriations and tax levy. So what you what you really need to have in making an amendment, it, it, it's not so much a change to the TO, you would do that later, but you would have to make a change to uh, the budget appropriation to add a, a particular amount, X amount, to uh, either to the levy or, or add a new line item, and then you have to account for that by taking it out of somewhere else. So okay. that needs to be a part of your motion. All right. Um, for this particular year, and I don't expect that it will continue this way, but I would move that it come from the general fund balance, the unallocated portion of the general fund balance. And I know that that's probably unusual, but if we consider this as a project in process, um, that first year, this communications person, I think, um, can, can go about and work with the mayor and the department heads to determine what's needed and how it's needed. And at that point, I think that, that we, can, we can look at establishing different funding. Um, I, th I think probably when, when the technology department um, presented their budget to us just a couple of weeks ago, uh, each department contributes a certain percentage 
of their budget to technology because they all use it. And I don't know that that would be how we would fund it, but I think everybody needs communications and we need it consistent and we need to establish the brand and we need to develop the plan and we need to centralize both external and internal. So that crosses a lot of departments. So, but for this particular one, um, I think it should come from the general fund balance that's unallocated. And what's, what's the amount that you'd be? Um, well, let's do uh, the 70 to 85 plus. But you, you have to have an, um, an amount to How come in the budget. About $100,000. Okay. So you would, be take, you would, in essence, be adding $100,000 to the personnel uh -huh. budget. Okay. Do we have a line item number? Uh, I have Vicki in the queue. I would like to ask her to maybe, to maybe chime in with this. Maybe. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to, to make a, a mention that when you have a budget of uh, for a full-time position, we would also make an assumption regarding benefits. So that would add just conservatively, if someone chooses the family plan, for example, that's our best way to do it. It could be up to $25,000 additional um, for, for the health benefits that the city covers. So uh, I just yeah. didn't want you to underestimate the cost of what this position would be. If the salary is, is at 85000 there would be additional funding for benefits. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So we maybe won't offer up to 85, maybe we'll offer up to 75, but I think 100,000 is a nice round number for starters. So, so it, it, I just wanna, I'm just sort of making sure we clarify before we get a second. So your motion then would be to add $100,000 to the salaries and benefits line items in the mayor's budget uh, for a full-time communication position the funds to be taken from the general fund balance and, and an equivalent amount reduced from there. Is Correct. That... Correct. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Motion's made and seconded. Are there any discussion on this? Okay. Okay, hold on one second. I'm going to just put... Here. Here. Push a button on me. Okay. Okay. Now, here. Hang, hang on. There you go. Now you're there you red. go. Right. Get a red. When you get red, mic, you have Child by fire. Um, yeah, I was just asking what is our current communication? Uh, how do we deal with it now since we do not have a communication specialist? Uh, do you want to take that? Chuckle or, over here. Or, or, I'm, or, I'm, or does Ryan want to take that? I'll go. I'm going to give Ryan a. I, I'd love to, to kind of jump in. I, re, I respectfully think that this position has merit to it. Um, presently, we do have a communications um, person. The mayor's assistant is his assistant, and half of her position is communications. And she presently does handle quite a bit of the communications with the city, city newsletter, our uh, Instagram, our Twitter, things like that. Um, other departments also handle different uh, websites and activities throughout the city, and that's part of the disconnect. What I would like to add real quickly, though, is we have, and I just want to stress that we have to be careful, we have to have a strategic plan, and we have to make sure that the plan is strong enough to continue to have it year over year. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know as a member, the, the mayor and I are members of the SEEDC, and they are hiring a communications position presently, and they are, they're struggling to fill the position, and they're asking, they're, they're actually looking to spend over $100,000 just on wages, not benefits. So respectfully, if they are struggling to fill this position, a communications position at 100,000, respectfully, the city is going to be looking at not $100,000, but more like 130 dollars to $150,000 to actually fill the position with a qualified candidate. I do want to make sure that as we are uh, a newer a newer council, please remember that TIT 11 actually saved the city in 2021's budget because of the closure. 
I've been stating for a year and a half that 2022 and 2023 are going to be difficult times because of the loss in revenue that the city has, has been sustaining year over year. And with Alliant Energy closing the, the facility, that's again a loss in revenue um, as a new alder. So I do want to make sure that people understand that we, we are addressing a lot of internal issues and adding additional personnel when we have positions, we have five to six present positions at the bus, as bus drivers, not filled. We have a police department, three plus um, positions open. The court system has one position open. Uh, we have multiple crossing guards that we need. We have a permit clerk uh, that's open. Again, low wages. We haven't been able to fill that position. We have a supervisor position at DPW. Haven't been able to fill that position because of low wages. Wastewater, we have a supervisor position. Again, low wages, haven't been able to fill it. The police department communication position, this is the person that does all the PD, and he's the, he's the he or she would be the position that actually puts the uh, equipment in the squad cars and makes sure that all of the communications at the PD are up to, uh, up to the level needed. That's a skilled position. Again, we're not able to fill it because of low wages. The fire department, I believe we have a lieutenant position that's available and open. DPW has three and a half positions open. Um, Uptown Senior Center will have a position that's open and needing to be filled in 2022. And there's additional positions that I'm sure are out there that we continuously haven't been able to fill. And that's why the city is doing the wage study and I really, really ask the council, please consider that we look at this position in 2022 versus trying to force it in right now, because we have positions as we, as the council has approved the studies in process with Carlson Detman. And there we, we know that we have a significant amount of positions within the city that are below the rate that they should be. So we could lose additional people. We also have a position at the at the Mead Public Library that they would like us to fill, which is the um, teen uh, teen librarian, if I'm saying it correctly. Again, that's that position is a significant cost, and we have we that's not even on the on the docket today. So my concern is if we if we approve this position and we have so many other open positions, what are we showing our present employees? Where's the importance? Communication is very important, not disagreeing. I do agree that it needs to be addressed. The city looked at this back in 20, 2017 during the strategic plan. In 2018, the community survey shot it down with the rebranding and the, and the improvement of communication. DPW did a little bit of a rebranding during the garbage cart program. Um, and the, the city, ad, city administrator uh, prior, before me, uh, was, in, it was involved in that. But again, it was shot down by the council. Um, we do have a person in communications, and I agree that it needs to be addressed, but we need to have a plan. And I, I personally don't feel that just making a line item addition really is going to set this position and person up for success because it's not just the wage of 100 of seventy to eighty-five thousand dollars, which I respectfully think is too low. Saying a hundred k, we still also have to give that person additional dollars to be able to be successful in implementing whatever needs to be done in cleaning up our actual um, communications po policy. If you have any additional questions, please let me know. Mayor, comment. Thank, thank you, uh, Chairman Decker. Um, so I guess I, I'll just come out of the gate. I oppose this amendment, and I would encourage alders to vote against this. I think that this is a reckless way to handle the budget right now as it is. Um, I think there are a lot more things that are already in the docket. We have the strategic plan coming along the line, which will set a clear vision and help us with a plan of how we can have a, a solid communication strategy as we move forward. As Administrator Wolf mentioned, we are currently reviewing all the job descriptions in the city. Um, through this JDQ process. So we understand and we hear, we hear the elders' concerns. Now, I'm still the new mayor um, and we do, have, we do have a communications person 
to answer Alder, Alder Wilson's uh, comment as well, too. I think a better process moving forward will be to probably pump the brakes on this amendment. Um, and there are other options. Myself, um, by my assistant, and the communications person, Sarah, would be happy to present uh, at a finance and personnel committee meeting or another platform, if you will, to talk about what we currently do for communications, what options are out there for moving forward. I know that myself, Administrator Wolf, Director Schneider have all asked that before that something like this would happen, that we would have a conversation prior. I don't believe that we had full conversations or complete conversations, in my opinion, um, about how we move forward on this. So um, I don't know if other elders have any questions. I know that we have so many room, so much more room for opportunity and growth when it comes to communications, but throwing some numbers on it where it doesn't sound like we had a solid plan um, right out of the gate, I don't think is, is, is solid as well. And Administrator Wolf hit on it too. We're just talking about salaries and benefits. Now what's the conversation on the tools? When you talk about communications, now we need video editing um, platforms. Now we need new computers. Now we need um, different, there's other things that need to be paid for as well for have this person to be successful. Myself would be successful, other city staff to be successful as well. So we're, we're not even, you know, we talk about, oh, we don't have a communications plan. We don't even have a plan how to do this right now. Um, so I would respectfully disagree with, uh, with this amendment and would encourage a no vote from Alders. Thank you. Alder Perella. I have my reservations as well about this plan. And although I like the idea very much, um, I'm thinking that perhaps, as also the mayor mentioned, we may um, need to look into better ways to utilize the current role of communication. So maybe there is a way to strategize better the use of the current specialist while addressing the issue um, on long terms. Thank you. Oop, Robert. Sure. Go ahead. Um, Mike. Mike and I appreciate, I, I heard all the observations. I appreciate the fact that yes, there is a way to do it. And I also think we need to appreciate the fact that this has been in discussion since 2017, 18, 19. We have a report, 20, we're in 21. We wait another year, that's 22, and we put it in the 23 year budget. So seven years from the time we recognized there was an issue until we act on it, and, and that's a concern. Um, and secondly, if you recall that my first, my first try at let's amend this was to put it in the table of organization and, and Alder, um, not Alder Wolf, former Alder Wolf, but currently Administrator Wolf, um, read a whole laundry list of jobs we don't have filled. I would love to have communications director on that list that says not filled. I just, I just, I want it, I want it there. So I want it there. I think the city needs it. Um, am I willing to wait if the alders say, sure, we should wait? I just want you to know we're seven years out if we wait because it will be 2023, hopefully, before we get something, and it may even be 2024. Right, Alder Lester. I'm just curious, given that this has been a conversation for so long, I'm not, I'm not seeing it in the strategic plan. Is that something we can talk about or add, or why haven't we? I have the same interest. So. I'm just gonna be blunt and say that as it is, the current strategic plan is not a, a strategic plan. Um, and no offense to city staff that have put hours and work in it, and they'll, they'll say it as well too. In my opinion, and I believe Administrator Wolf shares a, shares a similar opinion, that the strategic plan was almost a format of setting goals and kind of checking boxes. I think we've did a, a great job at, at meeting those benchmarks. And this is a big priority in terms of why we're hiring Baker Tilly so that we can have a professionally done strategic plan so that we have professionals that, that do this work in the municipal world so that we can have a more in-depth um, conversation about where we wanna move the city forward. So the first strategic plan, I guess I wouldn't call it a strategic plan. I think that's just kind of 
is a comfortable term for individuals. I think it kind of sets goals and priorities and benchmarks for us, which is part of a strategic plan, but we, we need to set a vision in terms of where we want to go um, and not necessarily just check a box and say, we planted X number of trees, we had this number of people, like a Facebook post, if you will. So we want something more comprehensive, more professional. Um, so that's why we're, we're taking it to the next step uh, with this Baker Tilly contract. Um, this strategic plan, as if we call it, was done in-house. Um, and uh, it, was, it was primarily done by Director Pelichek, I believe. Um, and not knocking his work at all. I think he did awesome with the tools that he had, uh, but we want to step it up a notch. And just to reference older um, Flicky Paneski's comment too, um, I think we have new leadership now. I think we have uh, really good uh, folks in the right place um, from the top with Administrator Wolf, hopefully with myself, uh, with some of the depart department heads as well. So you have a lot new newer faces on the council and leadership and at the director level. And we hear, we hear the elders. I mean, I, th I think every single person has inquired at some point about what, what we're doing forward. I just don't believe that this is a, a good platform uh, to do that. So I, I hope that answers all your questions, Alder Lassie. No, I appreciate you saying yeah. that's not, uh, and no offense and that, again. That's just my opinion. But... I don't know if, if others well, wanna. Well, and I just wanna jump in. The city hadn't done a strategic plan so what we did back in 2017, and I was involved as an alder, was a great springboard. But we had no budget, we had no plan other than develop a strategic plan. And that's why a year and a half ago, I was the first one saying, hey, we have to extend our strategic plan. We were doing, a, if everybody recalls, the last year and a half, the city has been under a lot of opportunities as I call them. We've been bringing forward a lot of, of areas that needed to be addressed. We've been doing a lot of internal repairs and workings on our policies and procedures. We have brought so much to the council that I was the first one that said, hey, we need to take a time out, extend our present strategic plan and push it off a year and bring in an outside group to help us communicate and get participation from our, our community because our first strategic plan was city driven, not committee, not, not constituent driven. We talk about how, as the mayor said, it was our box check. You know, we planted this many trees, we did this many miles of roads. We, we know what the, what the city wants from our perspective, but we need to get their involvement. So respectfully, when we talk about adding the communications position, I agree, but we have to have a plan because we have to be able to afford it. We did not lay off anybody except one person that was a janitor for the senior center when we closed it, and there wasn't any positions that we could give that person. Otherwise, our, empl our, empl our full employee base of 450 plus people never saw a layoff day during COVID. That's a lot to say for our community. We kept everybody working and employed, whether they were working from home or whatever. That's a huge cost to the city. We can't continue to just hire positions. I have a safety position that the city should have, had it years ago. We're, we are such a diverse and complicated community that we don't even have a safety person to help us keep our employees safe and keep our workers comp down and keep our injuries to a low level. That's another piece of the puzzle that needs to be fit. But again, the mayor, myself, and, the, and our, our valued department heads and employees, we're trying to focus on the really important pieces to get them corrected and, and, and in place because we want to grow the city. We want to make sure that we're doing things correctly, strategically, having plans so that we can not just hire and have to lay them off the next year because we don't have the funding. We're not a nonprofit, but we are a nonprofit. So we don't wanna be that unbalanced that we don't know how we're gonna be able to afford it year over year. And it's very important. We can't just raise our revenues. We can't just raise our taxes. We have to be very cognizant and concerned with every choice we make. So let me know if you have any additional questions. Thank you. All right, anyone else have any Questions or concerns? Okay, Mayor said we can do this on board docs. So um, all those that are on board docs, um, so all the person Mitchell, you have a question. One last quick comment, thank you. Uh, 
I would just ask, uh, Mayor, you mentioned maybe doing a presentation or something with finance and personnel just to keep the conversation going. Uh, I would most certainly welcome that at a committee meeting anytime you guys want to come. I think it would be helpful to at least uh, keep talking about it and keep it top of mind. Thank you, Alder Mitchell, for appreciate that. Okay. 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 All uh, right. So everyone, check your board docs. Um, Get there. Andre. He's a no. Barb, your vote. I'm voting no. This is the voting on the amendment. It's voting on the amendment. Seven no's, two eyes. Motion fails. Okay. All right. Now we get back to the original motion. Does anyone have any other questions, concerns uh, on on the rest of that? So, um, oh, I, Alder Salazar, go ahead. Yep. Thank you. Um, so, is this where I would I would? Uh, yeah, if okay. you want to make your motion, kind of... Okay, so I would like to make a motion um, to increase the Mead Public Library budget of the amount of $50,697 in order to increase the wages of their 12 part-time staff workers to $13 an hour um, so that our city budget reflects um, our aim to be an employer of choice. So the one thing you're missing out of there, so it is to increase the um, personnel line item for the Mead Public Library by 50697 mm -hmm. for the purposes you provided, and it's coming from where? Is it also coming from the general fund balance, um, or is it coming from somewhere else? Well, let me pull this up. Um, I guess, yes, if we can pull it from the general fund. So the corresponding reduction in the general fund balance. Correct. 5697. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll make the second so we can have some discussion on it. Motion made and seconded. Okay. Uh, let's do we have some discussion? I see Andre's got a light on there. Oh, second in, but. She beat me. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> May I? Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Dean. I I do want to um, say no. I would like to recommend that the council vote this down. Please remember, uh, we've been doing the Carlson Detman uh, wage study, and I agree wholeheartedly. I was the one with the, the department heads that said we need to bring in. Carlson Detman to do the wage study. We need to look at the cost and the benefit of every employee. And we are in that process and we are moving as quickly and diligently as possible because we have, as I've said many times, we have many of our team players, team members that are underpaid and we have to adjust that. And we have to be very cautious and have a strategic plan again. And I say strategic plan and, it, and I mean it wholeheartedly. We can't just raise wages and not real, realize where is the money coming from. And we, ha we also have to be very careful, very, very careful. And Director Kruger, uh, Krieger can actually jump in on this. We can't just use general fund for operational costs. That is a really, really bad situation. And I don't even know if we can do that technically, but she has better experience with that than I do. But we have said with the Carlson Detman plan that once we have all of the information, we're going to be able to put together a plan to look at the city as a whole 
Now, I say the city as a whole. I'm not, I'm not including any of our union unionized departments. It's only the non-unionized. We have to make sure if we're going to focus on, and I'm not saying, I'm, and I don't mean this in any disrespect. Please remember, I don't mean it that way. I'm asking to hold off. Uh, Caitlin and myself, we've, we've allocated some money to put towards wage review, but we can't just say broad stroke of the brush, we're only going to take care of the library or we're only going to take care of EPW. We have so many positions and so many valued employees that we really have to put a plan together and see what we can do. If we're going to raise the pages, which I believe is what we're talking about, we're looking at a 30 to 40% increase for those couple of positions. What are we telling those, those, those other positions that are out there that they're going to get a 30 to 40% increase also? We want to be competitive. I agree with Alder Salazar. We want to be the employer of choice, but we have to be able to afford it. We can't just raise wages, and then that would mean that we would have to take it out of the projects and or we'd have to cut, cut services. We'd have to uh, possibly lay people off. So we have to have a plan, as I've always said, and we have to take steps and not just start running. We have so many valued people and it would not be fair for us to push this through when the, when the actual, actual library had a fund, uh, an actual deficit of $41,580 already adding another 50 plus thousand dollars on top of already deficit and take it out of general fund. It, it, what are we going to do next year in 2023? As I've said, and I believe Caitlin has also said it, 22 and 23 are going to be some difficult years until we have some additional TID closures. So please, please, please be careful. This is something that is going to affect everyone. Thank you. Alder Salazar. Yep, thank you for that. Um, and I agree with you, Administrator Wolf. Um, we have 12 part-time workers who are currently receiving anywhere from $9 to $11 an hour. They are in that special rack of that uh, category of the double A, so they're not even hitting the base of A, what we're giving across the city, right? And so what I'm asking is let's move them out of that double A and move them into A so they're at least matching. And I guess they seem to be the only ones in that role. They do, we're looking at part-time staff, so they won't receive health care benefits due to their status, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so I think we should fairly compensate them as essential workers in the city. Um, I, I'm concerned if we, if we don't move them up, sort of will we have staff to recruit them, you know, even six months from now, even a year to now, considering there are multiple places they could start to work at, Quick Trip, Target, McDonald's, they're offering $15. Alder Salazar, thank you for that. I, I do just want to add a, a couple of comments. I am not disagreeing, and I have never disagreed with the fact that the double A line item should never have been actually made. When I first came in, we stopped hiring people at the lowest um, entry level because we were actually, we would have to actually offer people less than what they were making to come and work for the city. Not disagreeing with your statement. The whole, the whole wage scale program is going to be rebuilt because technically we have two programs. We have one um, for DPW and we have one for the rest of the group. We have to have one wage scale and it has to be appropriate to the, the cost and the value for us to be competitive. We have so many positions and I'm not disagreeing. The, the library is a, is a perfect example but DPW has an ex also has double A's, and we can't fill those positions either. Our, our, our employees over the summer were very difficult to hire because, again, as you said, people can go and work at anywhere, anywhere for $15 an hour and $20 an hour. But what are we telling DPW employees and seasonal staff if the library employees are more valued than the ones that are outside working in the sun and the heat and all of that, they're all valued. And what really needs to be addressed is the program on how we value our, our positions and how we can afford it. So I'm not disagreeing. 
I'm just disagreeing that now is not the time to force a line item in because it will affect area, other areas within the community and other projects. Thank you. I just want the hit thing and this came up. Oh, oh there here we go. go. Okay. Okay, Alder Perella. You're Thank next. you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I just need to get to clarify some things. I have imp had the impression that these part-time employees at the Mead Library are actually besides DPW, are those that are paid the least within the um, CD employees. Is that correct? I mean, I hear $9. I, I hear $11. I hope that it is true that there are no other employees that are paid this little. Okay, there we go. <coughs> go ahead, Vicki, you're, you're on now. Thank you. Um, uh, of the of the employees for the city, the pages are in that double A category, and so um, they do have the lowest wages. That going as uh, Alder Salazar has said, they range anywhere from nine dollars and thirty seven cents, uh, and to ten dollars and eighty six cents for part time work at the library. So if I if I may just explain our current pay scale grid right now, it goes from double A pay grade all the way to Z. Um, and I am happy to share that document with all of you so that you can see that um, the the goal of the and and as uh, Administrator Wolf said, that public works also has a separate pay scale that is a holdover from after Act 10. Um, so it's it's older and one of the goals for this for the study with Carlson Detman one is to consolidate our pay grades so that we don't have so many we have too many in my opinion and then also to incorporate those pay grades from public works into the non rep pay grade scale so that um, everyone will be on one uh, systematic uh, scale and then with that that we will be adjusting and making those adjustments to all the all the positions, which would also include the pages at the library, because when we initiated the Carlson Detman study earlier this year, we submitted 140 job positions for the city. And part of the problem that we had as, uh, as an organization over the course of time is that we have been inconsistent or um, does not keeping up, not keeping pace with uh, with the with the marketplace, and so it was very clear that we had some positions that were incorrectly categorized. That is no doubt. Um, we have positions that were uh, similar positions that were put in in disparate grades. Um, so it was rather some, it's sometimes random, and when we discovered and talked about the different uh, disparities within the wage scale, that this was not just a singular problem in one department, it was across the organization. And that's where um, going to Carlson Detman was critical for us to be able to offer just wages for all positions um, and to be able to put those categories into a place where we know that they are, that our employees are being paid equitably because we know that we are not keeping pace with our competition in, in many ways. So we are hopeful that the, the Carlson Detman study will, will be able to guide us and so that we can be consistent and fair across the board uh, with all the different uh, positions that we have. Again, that does include the pages. We are meeting with Carlson Detman, and by we, I mean Administrator Wolf, uh, Director uh, Caitlin Krieger, myself, 
um, and with Carlson Detman's leadership team to do the follow-up for what they have discovered through the, the conversations that they had with every director here uh, regarding all the positions. And we, we have an expectation that within the next couple weeks, we will have more direction to go in with what the wages should and could look like. So I, I don't disagree that the wages are not in alignment with what, what necessarily needs to be. I just don't know what the, what the resolution should be for. Um, I don't want to be premature in saying that this, this uh, classification needs to have a wage adjustment when we haven't been able to do all the different classifications. So I would like to make sure that we're being fair to all employees. And as a follow up, I, I wanted to, um, so it seems unlikely to me that, and I agree that there is a study, we should wait for the results and, and, and address um, the city employees as a whole. But at the same time, it seems unlikely to me that the study will not show that nine to ten dollars and thirty-five cents is not enough for the pages. So what I'm trying to say is that there is no obviously this is not a fair retribution to these individuals. I I do feel uh, full-heartedly that this is I mean it's it's something that I I support to um, try to make this more fair for these employees while waiting for the study to be completed and address the situation of the city as a whole. Uh, Alder Laster. Okay, I have two questions. One, can we wait to approve the budget until the study is done? That seems to me the most equitable way. I totally understand adding in insurance and things like that, and that there's other people paid at a lower amount. So I'm not sure why we're pushing this through before a study is done, because then to me, aren't we going to wait a whole nother year to create more equitable wages? My other question, Caitlin, is for you. Everyone's talking about pulling from this general fund. And so because I am new, I'm just asking for clarification, the dangers in that and if there's any reason that, that there's a benefit to it. Someone has to take, there we go. Okay, there you go, Caitlin, you're on. Thank you, uh, general fund fund balance is really used for reserves and rainy day fund. Uh, we use it for contingency every year, which is projects that come up that we have not planned for. For instance, my Munis chart of account redesign was 40,000 of fund balance use. The concern with using fund balance for a recurring expense is that the fund balance can get depleted and then you have nothing to pay these employees with. So the big concern from a financial standpoint is using any fund balance for a recurring expense, just like your bank account at home. If you have savings accounts, you're not gonna use it to pay your cable bill every month because eventually you'll, you'll run out of money. So that's the big concern from there. I will just also make a comment as um, the finance director, I've had five different departments come to me asking for wage adjustments for employees that they were either about to lose or had inklings that they were going to lose or could not fill. And I've told five different people that we could not make any adjustments because of this compensation study. I think I'm along, I'm in line with everyone else knowing that this wage does need to be adjusted but if we will have results in the next few weeks, we have a wage, reserve, wage adjustment reserve built into the budget so we could wait until we get the results in order to make a final decision on how to pay. Thank you. If I, could, if I may just add a few things here real quickly. N nobody in the city, whether it's Vicki, myself, Caitlin, the mayor, we are not in disagreeing that there's an issue with the wages. That's why we, we brought Carlson Detman forward. We didn't just make a broad stroke of the brush and say, oh, well, let's raise the wages in this department, that department, um, willy-nilly like the past. We're actually putting data and structure to this. And we're also looking and planning on building a plan so that we're, because we can't fix it overnight. It's gonna take several years to get us where we need to be respectfully but we have to have a plan on how we can afford it unless the council is willing to raise the wages 
and then lay people off when we run out of the money, we can do that. Or we can raise the wages and then we can reduce the service structure that, that we provide. And none of us want to do that. My concern is we have such a delicate situation, and that's, again, Carlson Detman explained to Vicki Schneider and myself that since we came on board with the program with them, 85 municipalities signed up afterwards. This is not a city of Sheboygan problem. This is a problem throughout the country with, when it comes to wages because we have less, em, less employees out there, so more and more employees can pick and choose where they want to go. And respectfully, we're talking about some part-time positions that are working in a very good environment. I'm not disagreeing they're not making enough. I'm not disagreeing with that. But we have other employees that are making similar wages in, in, an un, in, a, in a more hazardous environment compared to an office space. The other piece that we want to be careful with, and I'm just respectfully pointing this out, there is the ripple effect. You raise the wage from nine to 13, now the person at $14 is gonna say, well, what about me? And the person at $15 is gonna say, what about me? And then those people at DPW that are making the $10 and $11 are gonna say, well, what about me? All of a sudden, we're gonna have people just clamoring to get away because we are not looking at the whole, we're looking at an individual area. And personally, for all of us, we have to look at the big picture and have a plan and be strategic because I don't want to have to lay people off in 2022 because we went too far too fast. We have to be able to, to, to afford this. And as Caitlin said, we have, a, we have a, a reserve. We're asking for a little bit more time so that we can do this and have data behind it to respectfully help everybody understand where are they in that position. Some positions in life are not meant to be careers. Some positions are meant to be additional income or you know, maybe a part-time job for a mother or a grandmother. So thank you. Father. Or a father, sorry, <laughs> sorry. My bad. Alder Pineski. Um, actually, I, I'll pass. What, you're, you, okay, uh, Mayor. Uh, thank, thank you, Dean. I'm just gonna uh, kick it back to our, our awesome finance director, Caitlin. Um, just just so alders can be informed about the budget process. So, so short answer, Alder Laster, to your question, no, we can't. We have to have the budget approved this year and we're not anticipating um, the complete study to be done February, early next year? Hopefully the end of this year, but we have to have a plan after. And, and just maybe maybe uh, Director, Director Krieger can kind of just talk more about the budget process. I know we have to approve it and then we have to send numbers to the, the county and then to the state as well. So we, we, have, we have to get this done by certain timelines as well. And then Director Krieger, could you also just quick, quick, quickly just kind of go a little more in depth about the impact that this has on our general fund in terms of our, our credit rating scores um, and other just financial um, uh, other impacts as well. Um, just so, so the elders can be informed about that impact as well. Sure, so I'll start with the budget timeline. Uh, we have the budget meeting tonight. Next Monday is the public hearing. November 1st is anticipated potential adoption. Why we need the budget approved, and really it's the levy is specifically needing to be approved, is so that we can get the tax bills out in December. So we can't push that off too far. And it just makes the timeline for finance department and working with the county and other taxing jurisdictions really tight if we postpone it any longer than that. So from a budget timeline standpoint, we're, we're kind of towards the end of the year and we're gonna have to approve, well, we're, you're going to have to approve a budget. <laughs> um, but for a budget amendment purposes, we have the $400,000 fund balance, not fund balance, wage amendment reserves, which is not using any fund balance. So that is an amount that I built into the budget this year so that next year we can do a budget amendment and change the compensation and the salary lines throughout all department budgets based on the compensation study results. So that 400,000 can go 
and get reallocated to all of the appropriate departments that are needing the adjustments, including the library, for example. For a fund balance standpoint, um, to answer the mayor's question, that is for credit, the credit agencies for Moody's, for example, they like looking at the city and using fund balance in a planned and structured way using it for capital projects, for example, and having a spend down that's over, let's say five years is a better way of doing it than using it for um, recurring expenses that are maybe unanticipated, um, but could have been budgeted for. So, the for, so doing the um, library adjustment out of fund balance would probably look, be looked at negatively. I will tell you from previous experience that my previous municipality, when we um, had the budget uh, balanced with the use of fund balance, we got dinged on it every time. So it's something that you wanna definitely make sure that you're doing responsibly. Um, am I missing anything? No, you're, you, you're, you're correct. And if we do lose our rating, um, that means that our geo bonding, which is general obligation bonding or borrowing, our interest rate would increase. And obviously that, that's a rolling average, so they would look at that for multiple years. Alder Pranesky. Yeah, um, when you talk about the, the reserve, the wage reserve, um, is that for the 2% wage increase that we budgeted for? No, that's an addition. Okay, and, and you talked about using a, a fund balance for um, recurring when it could have been anticipated. I dare say that $9 an hour was anticipated and it was not put into the budget. Is that accurate? That's accurate. The wage request to be increased from nine was not put into the budget. No, the, the, wage, the wage of the employees is anticipated at the present level plus a 2% across the board. And then Caitlin and, and I have allocated money in a, in a wage reserve so that we can look at how, where, we, where we need to allocate it. We know that we have critical areas throughout the city. And, and please, $400,000 is not gonna be enough but we have to be able to afford it because it's not just 400,000. There's benefits, there's insurance, there's all these compounding pieces. So as an example, if you're looking at, you know, um, $43,600 for the library, that's a chunk coming out of the reserve that we're putting aside just for a few, a few people. So again, we wanna look at everybody not just a certain area. Can I ask one more question? Okay. Do, do, do you have another question? Yeah, yes. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. So we've paid a couple consultants, and I know that they're expensive, and I'm just curious what funds are those monies coming from? Uh, depending on the consultants that you're referencing, we budgeted, uh, as Caitlin had pointed out, reserves. And that money would come out of the reserves because it's not something that we do on a regular basis. And because we budget money into reserves, they're one-time payment, one-time project, and it's not an, a reoccurring. The, the concern that you have with, when it comes to operations, you don't want to use general fund to finance your, general, uh, your, your operational costs, your employee costs. That is a slippery slope. And Moody's yeah. looks at that very negatively. All righty. Any other comments or questions? Then um, let's see, we're back on to the amendment. Um, if you would want to reference your board docs. Um,
four eyes, five nose. Okay, that is defeated. Um, we'll go on to the original uh, original proposal. Any other comments or on, on the original document? Okay, uh, then we'll vote on that. Alder Walton. Nine eyes. All right, motion passes. All righty, we'll go on to 2.3. RC number 130-2122, Light License Hearing and Public Safety Committee to refer resolution number 75-2122 by Alder Persons Feldy, Flicky Pineski, establishing the 2022 budget appropriations and the 2021 tax levy for use during the calendar year, recommends adopting the resolution. So you've already adopted the resolution, so a proper motion on this one and on 2.4 would just be simply to file the RC. Motion has been made and seconded to file the RC. Any other comments on this? Okay, just, just voice vote, okay. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Chair votes aye, that is passed. Okay, we're down to three. 2.4, RC number 131 2122 by Public Works Committee to whom was referred resolution 75 2122 by Alder Persons Feldy and Felicki Paneski, establishing the 2022 budget appropriations and the 2021 tax levy for use during the calendar year, recommends adopting. Again, just file the RC. Okay. Motion is made and seconded to file. Uh, any other comments? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Chair votes aye. That is passed. Okay. We have exhausted the agenda. Is there a motion to adjourn? Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.